Apple II compatible wire-by-wire -wire build, low speed bring up. I'm Dr. Matt Regan. All right, so we're getting into the home straight for this build. The aim is to get the Arduino, the 65CO2, the RAM and the ROM working. This will not be a full speed test, so I'm gonna use the auxiliary pathways into the Arduino for now. So first I need to install the chips and apply power. Excellent, no smoke. Now I want to establish the serial connection between the PC and the Arduino. First, we need the Arduino software, which can be downloaded for free from this website. When you start a new program, it automatically creates two functions, one called setup and the other called loop. Not surprisingly, setup is called once at launch, and then loop is called continuously while the Arduino is running. We start with serial.begin where we set the board rate. And for now, I'll just use 9600 board. Now we wait for the serial port to become available. All right, I'm gonna create a global variable called loop number. Then in the loop, I'll just send this number in ASCII form down the serial port. All right, let's test it. Well, that's a good start, seems to work. Now I'll increase it to a million bits per second. That works too. Now this part isn't strictly necessary, but I'll just add in a comment showing how I've assigned all the ports. Now I need to set up the ports. Each port has a data direction register and an output register. Setting a bit to one in the data direction register causes the associated pin on the chip to be an output, and the value of that output is determined by the output register. You'll note that I've set bus enable or BE to be low, which means the 65 CO2 address bus, data bus, and read write bus signal should all be disconnected. And this time, instead of writing the loop counter to the serial port, I want to send it to the address bus. And I'll put a one second delay in between the updates. All right, let's see if this works. This is A0, which should change level then hold for one second. Good, that appears to be working too. A1 should hold for two seconds. Now, I wanna see if I can copy the contents of the ROM into the RAM. I'm writing a copy ROM to RAM subroutine, which takes in an address and copies one byte from the ROM to the RAM. Here you can see I'm using port D to drive BE and the read write bar signal low. Now I'll use port G to enable both the ROM and the RAM at the same time. The ROM will ignore the read write bar signal and output a value, and the RAM will just write that value into the same address. The Arduino is clocked at 20 MHz, which is much faster than the ROM or the RAM, so I'm just going to slow it down a little bit with a loop. Then, after the byte's been transferred from the ROM to the RAM, I'll disenable both of them at the same time via port G. I'll call the copy ROM to RAM subroutine in the setup for all 65,536 memory locations. I want to test to see if the copy worked, so let me just query from a known location. Address 7AF5 contains F8, which is the instruction for SED, which is set decimal, which is the point at which I enter the Pac-Man code. Let's look at this data and send the value to the serial port. Oops, fix that up. Well, that didn't work. So when we try and debug systems like this, we always try and isolate out the parts. So first, I want to see if I can read from the ROM directly. Will this work? Hmm, no. All right, let's leave the ROM enabled all the time. Still no. Ah, there we go, I found it. When we read from a port, we're supposed to use pin A rather than port A. Port A is for outputting. Right, well that's better, I'm getting an F4 instead of an F8, but let's see what's coming off the ROM directly. F8. Ah, uh, did I miswire the port? So the plan was to wire D0 directly up to PA0, D1 up to PA1, and so forth. Let's go back to the build and see what I actually did. So this is what I've actually done. I've wired D0 to port A1 and D1 to port A0. and I've flipped these two bits all the way through the byte. Now I have two options at this point. I can rip up all the wires and reconnect them, or I can just make a software correction where I flip all the bits in each pair. 
given that this is just a low speed path for testing, I think I'll go with the software option. There we go, F8. Now let's look at the data after it. That looks a bit more promising, and I recognize the instructions after it too. Okay, I can read from the ROM. Now let's try the RAM. Hmm, FA followed by FFs. That's not right. This is a little bit of a Hail Mary, but let's try turning off the RAM before the ROM, so that the ROM is still outputting when the RAM's turned off. Hmm, no difference. Let's see if I can just write the F8 to the 7A F5 address directly with the Arduino. I want to do it step by step and slow it right down. I'll even put in a 10 millisecond delay. And let's give it another go. Still not working. All right, let's poke around the board a bit and see if we can find what's going on at the actual pins. So that's odd. I've probed around a bit and I found this. There doesn't seem to be any detectable level on pin 20 of the 65CO2, which is A11. So this could mean a few things. Nothing is driving the line, but the wire next to it seems to be working. It could be that the pin is not connected, but I checked and that's not the case. Or there could be conflict and two devices could be trying to drive the wire. Chips can get a bit hot when this happens, so let me check. No, not too hot. Next option is to remove one of the devices that could be driving the wire and see what happens. Turn it back on. Now pin 20 is high. This means that the Arduino and the 65CO2 were both trying to drive this wire. I'll circle back to this problem a bit later, but for now I just want to get the ROM and the RAM working. Looks like I was also using the wrong pin for read-write, which I also discovered by probing the board. And look, this is probably the real reason why the read wasn't working. Now let's run the code again. I'm getting an F4 on the read, which is looking a bit better. Ah, uh, that's the problem. I haven't made the correction when writing the data into the RAM. Let's try that. Looks good. I'm reading an F8. Let's try copying the entire ROM and see how we go. And there we have it, the correct sequence of instructions starting from 7AF5. I've looked at this code often enough to actually know what it's doing, and this is where it increments the score counter by 10 decimal. I've checked, and BE is low, so why is the 65CO2 trying to write to the address bus? Well, I've looked at the part a bit more closely, and I can see it's a UMC 65CO2, not a Western Digital 65CO2. And to be completely honest, I thought they were interchangeable. But after a little bit of internet sleuthing, turns out they're not. So I went on eBay and bought an actual Western Digital 65CO2. The part's coming from the United Kingdom, so it's going to take a few weeks. The part has arrived, but in the meantime, I built the video circuit, which I'll show in an upcoming video. But for now, let's see if the Western Digital 65CO2 works. Okay, I've plugged it all in. Now let's try the Pac-Man code and see what the 65CO2 is doing. So now the first thing I need to do is reset the CPU. According to the manual, it only requires two clocks during the reset. But look, I'm going to clock it a bit longer, mainly so I can see it on the Pro when I'm having a look later on if I want to. Also remember that the Arduino clocks a lot faster than the 65CO2, so I'm just going to repeat the port command a few times just to slow it down. Now I need to raise the reset signal and turn address low and address high back to inputs and the read-write signal back into an input as well. And now I want to read the value of program counter from the ports. I want to clock the CPU once for every time the loop routine is called. So upon entry, I want to raise the clock signal and keep it high for a couple of clocks before I read the address off the port. I don't need this BE or read write port control, but I do want to read the read write signal and send the appropriate information down the serial port. And don't forget to lower the clock signal before exiting. Oops, left off a semicolon. Well, that doesn't look like it's working. Port is for output, pin is for input. I wonder how many times I can make the same mistake. 
It's sign extending the address, which is really annoying. I'll see if I can stop that. Nope, try again. I'll change program counter to an unsigned int. That's looking more like it. And then we can see the reset vector, C780. This code from C780 is a small routine I wrote to preload the stack and the registers with the values I want before entering the Pac-Man code. And there we go. We can see the 4CF57A, which is jump 7AF5. So we've just jumped into the Pac-Man code. That looks correct. Now I want to filter so that I only get the writes between 2000 and 3FFF. And that's our pixel data. I might just sit back and enjoy it for a moment. Now I need to write a routine to send the address and the data down the serial port. And at the other end, the PC will read this off the USB and send the pixels to the display. I've just made up a very simple protocol for packing the address and the data into four bytes. And I use the top two bits of each byte as an identifier. I tried a couple of different ways, but this was the most fault tolerant. Now send the data to the PC in this packed form. Now I want to keep track of the number of clocks. And every 20,000 clocks I want to send a signal to update the display. And this signal is a write to C0FF. Alright, I've started up my display program, and here we have it, Pac-Man. Now the maze actually is stored in the display memory, but if you remember when I copied the ROM to the RAM, I didn't actually send over the contents of the display buffer. But he will see to raise the screen and update the maze. And this is what the entire system looks like. Now the code is a little slow, and that's because we're handing control back to the Arduino after every clock. Instead what I want to do is clock the CPU 20,000 times every time loops called. That means for a 1 MHz system, I should be updating the display at about 50 frames a second. I estimate this is running at about 80% real time. So let's look at what we've achieved in getting here. We've learned that the Apple II is a von Neumann architecture. We had a look at how memory forms, and that we can use pigeonholes with ducts as a metaphor for the memory. We learned about the memory interface and the read-write signal. We covered CPU clocking, and then we went on to build the data bus, the address bus, and look at all the remaining control signals. And finally, the bring up. And now we have successful code execution on the machine. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe and share.